Good evening, everyone. It is eight o'clock central time and it is, oh goodness, why do these pop-ups keep coming up? It's always when I start. Anyway, it is Thursday, May the 7th, 2020. And my name is Trevor Patrick Watkin and I am broadcasting live from Access Contemporary School of Music in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, for those of you that haven't tuned in before, this is the school where I teach and work and it's just a joy. I am spending pretty much 90% of my time here uh, throughout this. Hey, hey, by the way, if you're here, say hello in the chat. Uh, this is, I live very close to here, but I was trying to do things from my apartment and I really wasn't, I don't know, I, I wasn't getting as much accomplished as I would have liked to. And being here, even though I'm not very far, from my apartment this being here is a place where i feel really connected i and it, it just it helps me because connection right now is especially now is so important and so i spend most of my time here i reiterate i know i've said it on a previous broadcast but i tell all of my students i really hope that one day you have a job that you enjoy as much as i enjoy mine so anyway just to give you a little look at where i am this is access contemporary music in ravenswood neighborhood but we also have locations in the south loop rogers park and avondale of course Right now, with all of us being uh, shelter in place, it's sort of moot. You know, we even have some students who are joining us from the western suburbs, even as far as New York, to take lessons, which, by the way, you, should, you totally should. So um, now's the best, better time than any to get going. So if you're thinking about it, I've got a link in the description box. We'd love to have you. So let's talk a little bit about today's piece. Today I'm going digging a little bit further into the backlog of standard flute repertoire. Of course, Bach is a composer that needs no introduction, but did you know that the reason why Bach is so well known is not just because he was a wonderful composer, but specifically because of Mendelssohn who in the early 19th century decided to conduct the B minor mass. Bach in his day wasn't really a rock star. It was more Handel and Telemann that were the big names. Bach himself really wasn't. But when Mendelssohn decided to conduct the B minor ma mass, that really changed the course of, gosh, m music history completely, especially music theory, because a lot of most of my training is in music theory and what we call music theory is actually just finding names for what Bach did intuitively. So what, this is one of the reasons why Bach is, I mean, I, I don't know, saying that Bach is my favorite composer is a little bit, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. I always worry when I hear sirens. Oh dear, anyway. Um, anyway, saying, saying that Bach is your favorite composer is like a little bit like saying the Bible is your favorite book. Like every time, and, and, and this is, <laughs> this is by no means an anti-religious statement at all. It's just, it's a little bit like, oh, come on, you know? So, but anyway, the reason why I love Bach so much is because, I don't know, it's like, like a well, it's like eating a well-made meal or sitting on a well-made piece of furniture. It's just rock steady. So I have to look at the chat now. Yeah, we're getting very bad video. This is so, that's so annoying. I know my, my phone has been acting up. You know something I'm going to do, I'm gonna go on the fly here, just a second. I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna do it in real time. I feel comfortable doing this at this point. Just a second. Um, bear with me here. Uh, because I have a feeling that this will be much better. I might need to run my show from my webcam today. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut my iPhone and I'm going to do my webcam. Hello. So is that a little bit better? That should be a little bit better. You know, maybe I just, maybe I just need to do that more often. So, yeah, so this is going to get really funny because I have to like change it in various settings. But, uh, oh dear. Oh, this is funny. No, I'm glad this is happening. I'm glad you're all with me. So, please forgive me. I'm going to have to go through, I'm going to have to go through various, no, 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 this is good. Um, I see you, Hyrex. It's good. Um, all right, just a second. I have to go through various settings to like, just forgive me here. Here we go. I'm just gonna talk through this. 
I'm really, this sort of like solidifies my, oh heck, what did I do? Here we go, just a second. Just bear with me, talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Running, running video from my iPhone is a really stupid idea. Um, just a second. I'm just going through all of my different cues on this thing and just changing my video output. Oh my gosh, though, if this messes with the like audio sync, I'm going to feel like such an idiot. Oh my gosh. So, you know what? While I'm doing this, I want to tell you all, for any musicians who might be watching who are considering doing live streaming, I feel like the last two weeks have been insanely, oh, shall we say, instructive um, for me. <laughs> so, hold on. If any of you need any input, this is a really bad time to be like, oh yeah, totally talk to me about OBS, because look at me, look at how amazing I am at this. But it's kind of funny that I'm doing this in real time. There we go. I'm just changing everything. I know, isn't this awful? Oh, it's just terrible. Here we go. I'm almost done, promise. You'll thank me later, or maybe you won't, I don't know. Dum da dum da dum, here we go. Okay, now I'm done. I'm back! Okay, there, okay. So, this, I'm really grateful because honestly, two weeks ago, I probably would have had a heart attack, but I'm getting better at this. And this is kind of your, okay, so here's the thing. I mentioned a few days ago that this right here, what I'm doing now, is all about combating perfectionism. I had a student that asked me, oh, well, you know, don't you ever feel like you get up against a wall? Don't you ever feel like you're dealing with self-doubt? Every day, and you have to beat at it with your fists. So you're getting a real-time example of this is live shows are the death of perfectionism because you just have to do it and I'm getting better at OBS. It's a little bit like three steps forward and two steps back, literally. Um, in fact, I uh, I actually did, I had to do like four test runs before this show because the audio just wasn't syncing and it was horrible. So I am making a commitment. Oh shoot, I'm still looking at my iPhone. Just a second, this is ridiculous. Okay, I'm back. Okay, now I'm actually looking at you. Sorry, I've gotten so used to looking because the iPhone is just slightly above my laptop. Anyway, I'm looking at you right now. If there are any musicians out there who are interested in doing live streaming, you absolutely should do it. Um, but I, maybe, I, maybe, I don't, well, maybe I'm not the best example, but you can do it. It's not all going to go right, but here we are. Anyway. So let me come back to Bach. So now it just seems like a footnote, but yeah, I'm doing the Bach Suite in uh, B minor. And I normally like to do whole pieces. I don't like to do, uh, I don't like to do excerpts if I can help it, but the, I am only doing the Polonaise, the Minuet and the Bedanerie from Suite in B minor, specifically because I found wonderful backing tracks from uh, flutebackings.com. The link is in the description box. I wasn't able to find the full suite, but I'm okay with that. It's a weeknight. It'll be a, it'll just to be a little, I don't know, morsel of Bach or so. But um, anyway, I was having a really interesting discussion with a friend last night who's a really marvelous flutist who's up at Northwestern. And one of my favorite, actually probably my absolute favorite flutist in the world is Sebastian Jaco, who's a Swiss flutist, and he plays on a wooden flute. Now he plays on, not a historical flute, but he plays on a flute like mine, except it's made out of wood. And so the wood sound is obviously much more mellow. This is not going back, there we go. The wood sound is obviously much more mellow. And he said something really interesting. He said, I just can't take the wooden flute seriously. And I was like, that's interesting. I mean, that was a, it just it took me by surprise. I said, well, 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 what do you mean by that? Yes, Sarah, a dollop of Bach. Exactly. So tonight is a dollop. But anyway, I was like, well, what do you mean by that? You know, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. I'm just really curious what you mean. I can't quote what he said next, but the, the thrust of what he said was, well, if you're going to do historical 
go all the way. Don't do it in pieces. So if you're going to play a wooden flute, then play a, a period wooden flute. We call it a Meyer flute or, or the Baroque flute actually would have been, well, we just call it the, I don't know, actually just call it the Baroque flute, you know, with six holes in one key. I am not necessarily disagreeing, but I'm going to chew on that for a little bit because those of you that tuned in on Saturday, I played the Handel A minor sonata in historical tuning, A415 as opposed to A440, so it's a lot flatter. I'm doing the same thing tonight where I am taking my head joint and pulling it way out to make my flute flatter, and it has some other interesting sort of sonic properties as well. But that made me think. What do you think? I'm curious to know what you think. If you're going to play historical music, is it necessary to do, to go whole hog, play on a period instrument, period tuning, or go full modern where you play on a modern instrument, modern tuning, modern interpretation? And by the way, I'm not asking this to throw shade at him or so I can just bring the receipts later and be like, oh, everybody else thought. I'm just really curious because I think it's a really fascinating discussion and I completely understand what he means because... Pulling my head joint out all the way is pretty unorthodox, but that is the nice thing about these live streams is it gives me an opportunity to just kind of, I don't know, play around a little bit, you know. Um, I'm not entirely sure it's something I'm going to continue doing, but, you know, I mean, how are you going to know unless you actually do it? So, yeah, I'm curious to know what you think about historical accuracy. Is it necessary to go completely to one end or is it okay to do as much as you can, in this case, playing historical tuning, because I want to know. I want to know what you think, because um, I think it's a really fascinating idea. And, and I, I really love it when people I respect have opinions that are completely different than mine, or at least, or especially, actually, I should say, when opinions that challenge mine, because I, I have a lot of I have a lot of hard opinions about things and I tend to, I don't know, I get in my way that I get. So it's really nice when someone comes up and is like, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. So I think that's really cool. Anyway, it's also nice when I shut up occasionally, so I'm going to do that now. So say a prayer. Oh my gosh. It, if I, anyway, I'll. it feels like if I change anything in OBS, it just sends all my audio properties out. So we'll see. Anyway. This is great. Thanks all for being here, by the way. Ooh, uh, you know what? I'm going to read this comment before I play. I like this. Whatever makes, a more, whatever makes a more interesting concert. I enjoy learning about the historical differences, but I wouldn't be a pedantic snob if someone didn't have the proper historical instrument. Fair enough, you know? So this is Bach in the historical tuning and as the best of historical interpretation I can provide on a modern instrument.
say that was an awfully long intro for not very much music but that was really fun I'm actually really glad that you came with me on that little journey that I went on tonight and it just serves to <laughs> serves to confirm my suspicion that I need to just run the video off of my webcam instead of trying to do it from my iPhone and running it through oh what a mess anyway what was I gonna say um, oh, <laughs> that last one, that's probably the most recognizable one. That was actually the first ringtone. Uh, rather, I should say it's the ringtone that was on my very first cell phone all the way back in 2003. Any of you recognize that one? Oh, yes. It's, yes, it's, it's, these are jaunty pieces that I'm playing. Jaunty. Yes. Anyway, but if any of you, I mean, the bedanery, that's the, the one that everybody seems to know. Uh, but anyway... Uh, yeah, thank you, by the way, for giving me all your thoughts on the historical stuff. This is, I just, I'm just fascinated to hear what people's opinions are. So, tomorrow night's concert, which, by the way, eventually I will learn how to shut up. I will learn how to not do, like, enormous intros for, like, a piece that's, like, five minutes long. But uh, tomorrow night is another piece out of the stat. Why, I'm looking at the iPhone. Sorry, I keep looking above the camera line. Oh, I'm going to take off the thing from the stand. Anyway, uh, tomorrow night's concert is another piece, another French piece, if any of you tuned in last night for the foray. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm not so, Emily, I'm not surprised you know that piece. Yeah, the bedanery. Anyway, um, the, uh, the tomorrow night's is a piece called Cantabile e Presto from George Enesco, and this is a really standard flute piece, but I really like it a lot. It's not, I don't know, it's not like one of those classics that you just never pull out again. I'm actually really enjoying it. I was running through it last night, and I just really enjoy this piece a lot, and I think you will too. It's very interesting. Um, the, the two sections are very different from one another, and it's kind of fun to go into the back catalog. You know, I think the last time I performed this in public was in February of 2001, January? Yeah, it's, it's been a hot minute since I've done this one. And 
<laughs> and I'm really excited to share it with you. You are a joy. Thank you so much for being here with me um, every night at 8 Central. I will be here again tomorrow at 8 Central. And uh, I just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for sharing this with me and let me sharing, let me share you, ooh, la, la, letting me share my music with you. And if there are any musicians watching that are considering doing live streaming, do it. Just, just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. This whole thing literally started on a lark. I literally texted Bill and my boss, Seth Bosted, by the way, um, host of Relevant Tones. You should totally tune in. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it tonight. I'm just going to do it. And it's just sort of grown from there. So just do it. And if I can be of any help to you, uh, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to do so. And as you can see from tonight's broadcast, I am still learning, but fortunately I'm still able to think on the fly without losing my crap. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please stay happy, st please stay healthy. And I will see you again tomorrow night at eight.